So, Boris Johnson is Prime Minister now. Thank God, we need someone else. God, thank fuck, really. But, well, it, it was needed for. I mean, we it was between Jeremy Hunt and Boris Johnson. Everyone knew it was going to be Boris Johnson. No matter fit it was. No matter fit. But whatever happens new, I hope it, Boris does well in the future. I am going to be uh, talking about what he said in his speech in another video where I'll be re reacting to the actual his speech that he made today because he has officially came into the number 10, met the Queen, took the job from Theresa May, thank fuck, got his actual words out for Brexit and what he wants to plan to do in the future. So hopefully this is all good. This is a hope. The only thing that could really destroy everything, but I think Boris knows this. If Boris decides, you know, to go against what he says in more or less half of his speeches, the guy's unpredictable. And a lot of the Tory left, sorry, the Labour left, and everyone else like that, who does not support the Tories at all, are so damn biased against him, they're going to do anything in their power to shut him down. Anything from No Deal, to Scaremongery, to the Project Fear, to anything. And the amount of shit I've heard come out some Labour and bloody SNP mouth has been damn atrocious. Now, the, I wasn't actually expecting to be talking about this so soon, but the thing is, I haven't made a video in a while, so what's the best way to go about it? Speak about Boris Johnson. I have just been to see Her Majesty the Queen who has invited me to form a government and I have accepted. I pay tribute to the fortitude and patience of my predecessor and her deep sense of public service. But in spite of all her efforts, it has become clear that there are pessimists at home and abroad who think after three years of indecision that this country has become a prisoner to the old arguments of 2016. And in this home of democracy, we are incapable of honouring a democratic mandate. And so I am standing before you today to tell you, the British people, that those critics are wrong. The doubters, the doomsters, the gloomsters, they are going to get it wrong again. The people who bet against Britain are going to lose their shirts because we're going to restore trust in our democracy and we're going to fulfil the repeated promises of Parliament to the people and come out of the EU on October the 31st, no ifs or buts. And we will do a new deal, a better deal, that will maximise the opportunities of Brexit while allowing us to develop a new and exciting partnership with the rest of Europe based on free trade and mutual support. I have every confidence that in 99 days' time, we will have cracked it. But you know what? We aren't going to wait 99 days because the British people have had enough of waiting. The time has come to act, to take decisions, to give strong leadership and to change this country for the better. So Boris has just came out with a, probably the best thing, you know, in a while. As it's obvious, you know, announced he's going to be the Prime Minister. It's actually good he's actually talking about the No Deal scenario and that all the people talk about the previous argument. Like he said, the previous argument of 2016, people are still held back by it. And he also mentioned the thing about the actual biased fucking media and the biased politicians putting Project Fear out on the street and everyone saying doom and gloom. It's great. It, you know, finally he actually says something actually hear a politician to agree with. So, it's good that he is actually acknowledging the fact that he wants this to change because there is a lot of bias. I don't I've quite really agree that the fact that he's going to get a deal, I mean, the EU isn't going to change its mind because it's, it's not going to follow democratic rule like it's supposed to, like it ever would, but it's good. He's trying. But the thing is, we know no deal is going to be the probably scenario of the situation. But, it's giving optimism. 
This is speech is actually giving a little bit of hope into why I think he could be choosing. So, is that a good thing? Yeah, not not too bad. Not too bad. But he's given a bit of hope. If he can get a new deal, fine. But I highly doubt it because of Europe. Let's keep going. And though the Queen has just honoured me with this extraordinary office of state, my job is to serve you, the people. Because if there is one point we politicians need to remember, it is that the people are our bosses. My job is to make your streets safer. And we're going to come in with another 20,000 police on the streets and we start recruiting forthwith. My job is to make sure you don't have to wait three weeks to see your GP. And we start work this week with 20 new hospital upgrades and ensuring that the money for the NHS really does get to the front line. My job is to protect you or your parents or grandparents from the fear of having to sell your home to pay for the costs of care. And so I am announcing now on the steps of Downing Street, that we will fix the crisis in social care once and for all with a clear plan we have prepared to give every older person the dignity and security they deserve. My job is to make sure your kids get a superb education wherever they are in the country, and that's why we have already announced that we're going to level up per pupil funding in primary and secondary schools. And that is the work that begins immediately behind that black door. And though I am today building a great team of men and women, I will take personal responsibility for the change I want to see. Never mind the backstop, the buck stops here. And I'll tell you something else about my job. It is to be Prime Minister of the whole United Kingdom. And that means uniting our country, answering at last the plea of the forgotten people and the left behind towns by physically and literally renewing the ties that bind us together so that with safer streets and better education and fantastic new road and rail infrastructure and full fibre broadband, we level up across Britain with higher wages, a higher living wage, higher productivity. We close the opportunity gap, giving millions of young people the chance to own their own homes and giving business the confidence to invest across the UK. So Boris just mentioned probably one of the, another good thing he actually meant. It, the people are our bosses. Yeah, that is the whole fucking point of the P MP, Prime Minister and Member of the British Parliament. It's to serve the people. Unlike what you did with Brexit. Because that's what, how this democracy works, despite how screwed the system is. But, so, what else he's on about? He's on about 20,000 new police officers. I mean, that's not exactly the biggest problem, but it's good. Because he knows London is a disaster. Because the crimes went up, thanks to Theresa May cutting the stuff down. And then, uh, Shadiq Khan... I hope I'm saying your name right, to actually making the stop and search thing even worse than it was before. Because, <laughs> honestly, London's just a fucking shithole. I really would not want to be there, like a lot of places I don't want to be. He mentioned the thing about the GPs, the hospitals getting up get grades, the NHS getting its money's worth. Now, I know they've just mentioned the thing recently about the... Uh, 1.2 billion game point into the Brexit funding. That would help that. You know, it helps. You know, money from the taxpayer to help the NHS. We need to do that. All the money that we need to provide the NHS before it actually falls on its face is to provide for that. It works. He also mentions the thing about looking after the care for the people. You know, people who have their care benefits not very useful to them. The education standards, which aren't really that good just now. Because I remember Scotland being the highest education rate in ages. You know, better than 
half the country and then it fell down like I just smacked an old granny in the face. Yeah, she wasn't getting back up that day. Now, it's, it's, it's terrible. I mean, the education is bad. I felt like the blunt of that bad education. Not saying they did a bad job. Actually, I am saying they did a bad job because I'm a, a fucking muppet. Talk about this on YouTube. Okay. And it is also nice to hear he's actually going to take responsibility for it. What it is? You never heard Theresa May, David Cameron, or anyone else take full responsibility of what was going to happen next. David Cameron just left. Theresa May would say we left on 29th of March. We didn't do that part. But at least Boris Johnson's actually saying, hey, I'll take the responsibility of changing these small things. And then he mentions the thing about the United Kingdom, about the small towns, all the, you know, the small little places that people don't think they did talk about. There's a reason those places aren't talked about so much. It's because the news doesn't want them to talk about those places because they're against the BBC gender. They're against the STV, the ITV. And the Channel 4 agenda, they are not for your agenda. They're not for the government's agenda. But he's on about changing that because that, that's what the main focus is. This is how we end up in the shithole in the first place. Because we know what the fuck's going to happen if we don't listen to these people. If you don't listen to these people, you're just going to think you're going to forget about. You're going to get people who's like, oh, don't care about the voting anymore. And then you get the wrong person in. Like, everyone keeps moaning about balls just now. And it's like, oh, great, we got this guy in. Well, you didn't care about them before, did you, numpties? And he also mentioned the thing about the United Kingdom. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, you got a bad job with this one, Boris, I tell you that. I mean, he wants the United Kingdom to be the United Kingdom. You know, Scotland, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Good fucking luck, because you've got the SNP, the Lib Dems, and Northern Ireland, Sinn Féin, or whoever, whoever's in charge over there, I don't know. None of them want to work with you. I've asked this clear. None of them want to work with you. They all want to do their own agenda thing. But, let's just hear what he says. I think he's about to start getting a little bit pitch. Because it is time we unleashed the productive power not just of London and the South East, but of every corner of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. The awesome foursome that are incarnated in that red, white and blue flag, who together are so much more than the sum of their parts and whose brand and political personality is admired and even loved around the world for our inventiveness, for our humour, for our universities, our scientists, our armed forces, our diplomacy, for the equalities on which we insist, whether race or gender or LGBT or the right of every girl in the world to 12 years of quality education, for the values we stand for around the world. Every, everyone knows the values that flag represents. It stands for freedom and free speech and habeas corpus and the rule of law, and above all, it stands for democracy. And that is why we will come out of the EU on October the 31st, because in the end, Brexit was a fundamental decision by the British people, that they wanted their laws made by people that they can elect and they can remove from office. And we must now respect that decision and create a new partnership with our European friends, as warm, as close, and as affectionate as possible. And the first step is to repeat unequivocally our guarantee to the 3.2 million EU nationals now living and working among us. And I say directly to you, thank you. Thank you for your contribution to our society. Thank you for your patience. And I can assure you that under this government, you will have the absolute certainty of the right to live and remain. And I say next to our friends in Ireland and in Brussels and around the EU, I am convinced we can do a deal without checks at the Irish border, because we refuse, under any circumstances, to have such checks and yet without that anti-democratic backstop. And it is, of course, vital at the same time that we prepare for the remote possibility that Brussels refuses any further to negotiate. And we are forced to come out 
with no deal. Not because we want that outcome, of course not, but because it is only common sense to prepare. And let me stress that there is a vital sense in which those preparations cannot be wasted. And that is because under, under any circumstances, we will need to get ready at some point in the near future to come out of the EU customs union and out of regulatory control. Fully determined at last to take advantage of Brexit because that is the course on which this country is now set. With high hearts and growing confidence, we will now accelerate the work of getting ready. And the ports will be ready, and the banks will be ready, and the factories will be ready, and business will be ready, and the hospitals will be ready, and our amazing food and farming sector will be ready and waiting to continue selling ever more, not just here, but around the world. And don't forget that in the event of a no-deal outcome, we will have that extra lubrication of the 39 billion pounds. And whatever deal we do, we will prepare this autumn for an economic package to boost British business and to lengthen this country's lead as the number one destination in this continent for overseas investment. And to all those who continue to prophesy disaster, I say yes, there will be difficulties, though I believe that with energy and application, they will be far less serious than some have claimed. But if there is one thing that has really sapped the confidence of business over the last three years. It is not the decisions we have taken. It is our refusal to take decisions. And to those who say we cannot be ready, I say do not underestimate this country. Do not underestimate our powers of organization and our determination, because we know the enormous strengths of this economy in life sciences, in tech, in academia, in music, the arts, culture financial services. It is here in Britain that we are using gene therapy for the first time to treat the most common form of blindness. Here in Britain that we are leading the world in battery technology that will help cut CO2 and tackle climate change and produce green jobs for the next generation. So Boris is right there just decided to talk some, uh, you know, nice patriotic nationalism there. That's nice of him to do that. You know, about the British flag, about the freedom and all that stuff, leading the world. I mean, honestly, if you think about it, Britain is quite an icon in the world. I mean, if it's not the British family, the royal family, if it's really not the fact we're the fifth biggest economy in the world, or the fact we had an empire which took over the world, People sometimes love us and hate us because we've probably pissed off other of people, but we are still the biggest economy in the world. That's why people want to come over here illegally and legally, you know, because folk can do it both ways, stupidly as it is. But the fact is, the country's divided, Bolas. The fact is, it's that. If anyone's actually seen this one, this picture here, I've got a picture here, uh, this was the main natural idea for the difference between the Scottish flag and the British flag. I love both these flags, right? But the thing is, they call the British one the Empire flag, and, you know, can lead all the other names, and the Scottish flag is the Freedom one. You know, every time Scotland did that option, that really went well for them. But, that's, it's not too bad. It's, it's not, that's not bad. It's, it's what you expect. You know, you need the Prime Minister to speak about politics and speak about you know, how good the economy is and or how good that is, you know, it could be a shite hole in but you still got to give it privilege. Even dictators did that, and the countries were terrible. I'm not comparing him to a dictator's country, but you know what I mean. They still said it. You, We all do it. America's great. This is good. Trump says it. And make America great again. That's probably what it is. That's what I take it as. He also mentions the thing about Brussels. He's hoping for a trade deal with them. But the thing is, we all know Europe's not going to be like that. They're just going to be a cock cunt about it and like, No, we're not going to change our mind. Fuck you guys. Fuck you. You can, you can suffer. But it's like, well, we're going to leave on the, the end of October. Halloween. Well, suck your balls and we're off. So we don't have to be part of this trade deal. That's it. Done. Simple.
Oz also mentions the we're getting prepared for Brexit, you know, because they've put additional money in now. I mean, this is this is over a week old, but they've put additional money in, so the NHS is ready, ready the docks are ready, the the army's ready, we're ready, businesses are ready. This is not like how it was before, because the chancellor never even sent letters out saying, "Oh, don't be." He sent it to the big firm companies, like just any big. Firm company saying, "Oh, we won't be leaving 29th of March without a deal." You know that, that's crazy, man. That, that's that's pathetic. Honestly, you don't tell the businesses that. This is why they're going crazy now. They're like bigger orders are coming in, so my work even's gone busier just because of this. Because after he knows, it's like right, there's gonna be more happening. We need to get these orders seen to before Brexit happens, so we're prepared to do stuff. Because we people want to think ahead. It's fucking common sense. That's what it is. It's common sense. It's 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 simple. It is really simple to think about. It. It's just common sense to be prepared. It's always it's the same way it is. But we're always ready to see how it goes, and we will maybe succeed. How do you doubt we won't succeed? There might be a drawback, but that's the thing how Brexit works. We vote to leave. There'll be consequences about that, but we can make trade deals. They announced we're going to make trade deals with America now, and I thought the world was going to end. No, that's what happens with the downers that they use on about. The downers that keep saying, oh, the economy's going to fail. This is going to fuck up. Everything's going to go absolutely trash. But the thing is, it probably will, but not in the way that you think. Let's finish the last part here. I think I said that correctly. But if I don't, no oh well. Let's finish the last part of this. And as we prepare for a post-Brexit future, it is time we look not at the risks, but at the opportunities that are upon us. So let us begin work now to create free ports that will drive growth and thousands of high-skilled jobs in left-behind areas. Let's start now to liberate the UK's extraordinary bioscience sector from anti-genetic modification rules. And let's develop the blight-resistant crops that will feed the world. Let's get going now on our own position, navigation, and timing satellite and Earth observation systems. UK assets orbiting in space with all the long-term strategic and commercial benefits for this country. Let's change the tax rules to provide extra incentives to invest in capital and research. And let's promote the welfare of animals that has always been so close to the hearts of the British people. And yes, let's start now on those free trade deals, because it is free trade that has done more than anything else to lift billions out of poverty. All this and more we can do now and only now at this extraordinary moment in our history. And after three years of unfounded self-doubt, it is time to change the record, to recover our natural and historic role as an enterprising, outward-looking and truly global Britain, generous in temper and engaged with the world. No one in the last few centuries has succeeded in betting against the pluck and nerve and ambition of this country. They will not succeed today. We, in this government, will work flat out to give this country the leadership it deserves. And that work begins now. Thank you very much. mentions what I just said about there's going to be trade deals. He's already making these with America just now. Perfect as it is. And he's, well, he's right. He is right. The fact that it is we need to look forward. Everyone's at post Brexit, the end of the world, the Armageddon, might as well watch Apocalypse happen next door. Not going to be like that. Well, 
unless you think about it that much and take a hot nice bunch of dope but it wouldn't be so yeah it's it's pretty decent i mean the idea is just simple it is really simple just prepare for the future that is all it is because if you start thinking things are down gloomy doomy doom and all that stuff well you can't fit it's just gonna be doom and gloom for you but if you are the one bunch of people who are actually gonna fight for brexit or fight for this country itself you're gonna succeed that's how it's gonna work but he's he is like this was and this speech in total was just a basic speech you know enthusiasm for the British state the colony and all that stuff because we are getting better there was even word of a spaceport he meant about the, the satellites and all that there was maybe a spaceport up in Shetland or somewhere like that you know not a bad idea for the British to get involved in space because the Americans have done a terrible job but it's good speech I mean nothing basic this is my first attempt to talk about something like this it's been not bad but hopefully you get what I'm on about I'm just doing this the first few times see how it goes and you know hopefully I don't get the wrong idea I think but if you enjoyed this video please share it with other people and you know share subscribe to the channel and make sure this you enjoy the content because I'll be planning to make more of this because I'm getting sick of the biased media and it looks like Bollis might be the good option just now. Yeah. Good option. Fuck that SMP thing. But, sorry. But, um, it looks like a good idea. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you for watching it. Please like, share and subscribe to this channel. I do other content as well. But it's not just political. I do entertainment and music based stuff too not on this channel on other channels so be sure to check those out if you know i don't get shut down thank you and hope you all have a good day thanks guys